Hey guys, welcome to Beer Time. Kyle here. Today, we're going to Brown Town. So anyway, one of the things we're going to look at today is browns. I got two different browns today. I've got a cool homebrew. I'm sticking on point with the last video I did. I've got my buddy Chris Cates over at the Edisonian uh, Brew Shop give me something to try. I'm excited about it. And it's got a kind of a funny and interesting story behind it. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a br another brown. This is something that's a little bit bigger than this one. And that's saying something. This is at 4.2%. It's James E. Pepper 1776 Ale. It's an American brown ale aged in bourbon barrels. Should be cool. But let's get back to our first beer that we're going to try today. So Chris Cates gave me this beer. And it's got a neat story and a great name. It's called A Methodist and a Son of a Bitch. Which, if you know Westerns, um, this is a great... A great line out of a classic uh, Western movie, um, True Grit, and it's a fantastic name for a beer. He thought it was, and I think it is as well. It's just fantastic. So what this is, is this is a uh, imperial brown ale. You don't see that around very often. Um, normally, you, know, you people want imperial stouts and that kind of thing, but this is kind of cool stuff, and I'm going to see if I can explain it why to you. So... He has lots of different brewers that come into his shop, right? And these brewers um, of, are, are of all different ages and all different types of people. And what's interesting about it is that he's got a bunch of what you would call old timers that come into his shop. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the stuff. And what they're looking for is they're looking for pounds of this, pounds of this, and pounds of this, which isn't typically what the most modern brewers are doing. The, all, the how can I say this, the uh, Alton Branification, if you will, out there is to use very precise measurements and essentially not shoot from the cuff and make sure everything is down to the, the ground or the gram uh, or, or whatever very, um, you're not, you're not, you're weighing everything, um, and it's very precise, right? Neither here nor there. But these old guys are asking for pounds of uh, pounds of hops. They're asking for pounds of grain, right? And that's how they're making their beer. And Chris got this great idea, which, which was, I'm going to make a beer that is based on how these old timers have been making beer. These are guys that started doing this back in the 70s. So they've been doing it a long time, and it's very pragmatic. And they told him... Well, I just make it at home because it's cheaper than going and getting it, you know, buying it at the store. Well, hallelujah. I mean, I totally get that. So for you guys that are looking for a cool new way to brew beer in just kind of, a, you know, dumping these kind of large quantities of, of grains by the pound, if you will, when you're, when you're cooking it, making your mash and all that kind of thing, what he's done is come up with a recipe that really celebrates those guys. And again, it's a Methodist and a son of a bitch, and it's an Imperial Brown Ale. Kind of cool stuff. It smells great. There's a little bit of alcohol in here. And the reason why is this is running at 8.8%. It is imperialized for your pleasure. It's a big beer. There's some sweetness there from the alcohol. But it definitely has some roasty and toasty and caramely elements. Burnt caramel, if you will, elements on there. And there's some hops in there as well. Kind of a little bit of a hops backbone on the back end that kind of, you know, fortifies the taste and, and really holds the, holds the interest in the beer together. So you want another drink. It's not overly hopped. I don't, I don't want you to get that impression. It, but, you know, this thing could be a kind of a sweet, overly syrupy, smooth mess, and it's not. It's got the hops that kind of hold this thing together. This is a great 
warmer, if you will, I think as the weather gets cold, you know, and the leaves fall off the trees, this is going to be a great home brew for that time when you start putting your jacket on to go out and do your home brewing. Anyway, give Chris Cates a call. Get this recipe from him. It's a Methodist and a son of a bitch. He's out of Johnson City, and he's got the Edisonian Brew Shop. I love that I'm just stopping in there from time to time, and he's giving me one of these to try. It's great. I've only had I've had tastes of three or four of his beers, and I really like them. And it's funny, he's not selling them to me. I mean, he's just letting me try some stuff. He's brewing for demonstrations in the store. I like that. This is great. I'm going to have a great time sipping on this. This also is a great beer to enjoy as it warms up. Again, it's a kind of a warmer, I think of this as kind of a uh, an end of the day or something to cut through the cold, if you will. Uh, but I really like this. And by the way, the, the old style, you know, flip top caps, I think kind of classy with this. It, it really matches. So this is an Imperial Brown. I've got something that I guess is even more Imperial than that. It doesn't say that it's Imperial, but essentially what this is, this is James E. Pepper, 1776, American Brown Ale, matured in oak. This is aged in rye whiskey barrels. It's called Old Style. I don't think it's that Old Style. It's not what your uncle drank. This is at 10.4%. This is a, a big beer. I like it. It says this will age in the bottle for up to five years. This was made in February of this year. I'm going to drink it because that's what I do. I day drink. Yeah, let's see what's happening here. What is in here? In some ways, this looks very... It looks kind of similar. It's darker, less red. There's more foam on this, if you will. There's more oily bubbles coming to the top. We'll kind of see how that goes. And it, it's more of a um, toffee color bubble. You know, it, it's not white, right? That's interesting. It smells kind of like baked goods, you know, like baked pastry or something like that. That's kind of what I'm getting out of here. I expected to kind of smell more booziness, but whatever. We're going to give it a try, see if we like it. This is a solid beer. There's a little bit of hops on the back end. If you age this, that's going to be gone out of there. It's bordering on syrupy. Definitely a sipper. You know, is this thing great for day drinking? I would say both of these are probably better for night drinking, if you're into that. There are some caramel notes in here. There's also some bourbon barrel in here, which is what you would expect, right? I mean, that's kind of why you want it. Have I had beers that were more bourbon barrel than this? Yeah, a lot more, actually. There's some nougat notes, a little bit of vanilla, not much. And typically when you have these barrel-aged beers like this, what you're looking for in there is kind of mashed up with normally stouts or porters or something that they would put in there. So those coffee notes or, you know, licorice notes and those kind of really roasted notes. That's not here. It's a smoother product than that. It's not an elegant product. Neither one of these are. It's not. Uh, this thing This thing is made to enjoy with a flannel shirt out on the deck when the leaves are falling from the tree. You know, sitting around the campfire, whatever. Mm. Makes it sound like that I don't think that it's good. I think there's a time and place for these beers. This one in particular. And that is out in the cold. <laughs> But frankly, or, you know, wearing more than one layer, but that's just me. Um, so I like, I like this beer. Uh, do I love it? I've had, I've had better beers on here and I think my, my videos would probably, you know, share that sentiment. It's not bad. Uh, I think the packaging that's, you know, this 
1776. It's made by similar folks or same folks that, that make that whiskey. Um, sometimes I feel like that's a little bit of a, a gimmick, you know, but they have the cooperage to make their beers. They might as well do that as well, right? But anyway, not bad. This, in some ways, is more exciting because I think I think this Methodist and a son of a bitch, although it, it it's, doesn't have this bourbon barrel thing going on with it, it is a super interesting story. And I think super interesting that you could actually just make this if you wanted to make it. I've got these two fantastic beers here to make, or to make. I'm going to make them into my belly is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to drink these down and enjoy them. And uh, I hope you guys get to get out and do some day drinking. Have a great day. I'm going to have a great day. And we'll catch you later. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.